Well, my name's David. I'm the chief executive for the Hotel Folk. Um, we're a group of six privately run hotels um, established in 1994. Um, and the ethos behind the Hotel Folk is all about the people who work in our hotels, our folk. Um, and we put a lot of effort into their training and their development so that they're able to deliver what we call a blow your socks off hospitality experience for all of our guests. Um, and all of that training, all of that ethos is the thing that really makes us different from everybody else because we will go out of our way to make sure that our guests have a fantastic experience every single time. Actually, my background is in marketing. So I, before I joined the hotel folk, um, I had a number of um, senior positions within marketing departments of quite big corporate companies. As a marketeer, data and information is everything um, and understanding how consumers behave and what they're looking for, what their needs are, is really, really important. And um, we've made huge strides in terms of our uh, guest database, in terms of understanding who they are, where they are, what they want and how we effectively communicate with them. And, you know, and done that from an accommodation point of view, but also done that from a food point of view. Um, and that makes sure that we can tailor our offers and make us relevant to what guests are looking for today. Well, we didn't, we were, we were um, individually run really. So all of the hotels had their own brand by the name of their hotel. So the hotel folk never really united or brought anybody together in the sense of having a cohesive brand identity across the, the group. I mean, the individual hotels still lead from a, a, a guest point of view, but our staff, our folk, all work for the hotel folk. Um, you know, and that's probably one of the biggest advantages that we've seen across the group because all of our systems, all of our processes and procedures are the same. So you can effectively work at the Swan and Lavenham today and work in the Broodnell tomorrow. And if you're a receptionist, you understand exactly how the data works how that then feeds back into our databases and how we actually use it. Um, you know, and, and you can't make a mistake because it's exactly the same whichever property you work in. Well, we basically weren't really. I mean, we had an element of data usage within the golf club because we had used the intelligent golf system. So we used to talk to customers using that data set but we didn't really have any organisation of our data or information. We didn't have any understanding of, um, you know, guests that stayed in one hotel that may have stayed in one of our other hotels. Everything was sort of very compartmentalised and sort of put into its own individual box. So we could never see it all as, um, as a whole. Um, and from a guest review point of view, um, you know, as the hotel folk, the promise that we make to our guests is about delivering great hospitality, but we didn't have any method or any way of measuring whether we were actually achieving that or not. So that felt pretty crucial to sort of get that piece of measurement in place to understand whether we were actually delivering the promise that we made as a brand, as a group of hotels to our guests. Well, I think the, the biggest problem we had from a technology and a data point of view is we didn't have one single point of truth. Um, and certainly having all of our information in one point, we have all of our sales information, we have all of our guest information, and we have all of our guest satisfaction information. And by tying all of those three things together, you can start to make really intelligent decisions about what you need to change um, and influence for the future. The, the, the data that we get from guest review is, is huge. I mean, I use it in so many different ways. I use it to reward our staff. We have what we call folk points, um, which are points that go into a monetary um, equivalent at the end of each year. So, you know, if someone gets a positive mention in a guest review, they win folk points for themselves, they win rewards for their hotels. You know, we reward and incentivize against the promise that we make to our guests, which is about being the hospitality experts. So from an internal point of view, it's really powerful. 
I mean, we use it to inform our refurbishment programme. We understand by room type, you know, where the biggest issues are in certain bedrooms so that we can focus our maintenance teams and our refurbishment, um, you know, into those specific areas. You know, so it can add value in so many different ways, as well as making ongoing operational improvements to standards and procedures to make sure that we get it right every single time. So if you don't use it, then I would definitely say that you're missing out. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, you know, so each of our heads of department, as well as the hotel manager, you know, accesses guest review. So you've got a head housekeeper or a receptionist or someone in the restaurant team, you know, who are reading real time feedback from guests every single day. And sometimes those changes are harder to improve and sometimes they can be the smallest thing that we may never have, have thought about. And then, um, you know, actually we're able to action and to fix that, you know, almost in real time to make sure that future guests, you know, don't receive that sort of, you know, negative element of their stay. But on the other hand, there's also a lot of positive things that um, guests sometimes talk about. And actually that means that we can highlight and enhance that because we didn't actually realize how much they actually appreciated it. Um, so, you know, it can work in, in two ways, you know, make the, the positives even better and, and fix the weaknesses as and when they occur. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in both ways, you know, both in, in good and bad. And I think, um, you know, if you're, if you're working in a hotel every day, it's very easy to walk past something that a guest is seeing for the first time. And, you know, sometimes even I can walk around a hotel and go, you know, that really needs fixing. It, it stands out to me. And the, and the staff look at you and go, yeah, yeah, maybe tomorrow. But the power of actually a guest giving you the feedback almost changes the sentiment of, of what that actually means. It's not me. It's not the hotel manager. It's not someone within our business talking about it. It's actually a guest giving you real time feedback to say, do you know what, this could be better. And I think quite often that gets a better response from the staff than actually us pointing it out ourselves. Well, I think what the guest wants is, is that they want a seamless experience. And, you know, we always ran the risk when there was no integration between Foresight and Guest Review of say, following up with someone, sending them another email, you know, very generically going, you had a great time, why not come and stay with us again? Where in actual fact, we knew from Guest Review that there was an issue during their stay and the tone of the next email maybe didn't match the tone of their experience. So to make us look like we actually know and understand each guest individually, having the integration of that data and that information is, is critical because otherwise you just run the risk of looking stupid because you've sent the guest a message that completely contradicts their previous experience, good or bad. Well, I think what I necessarily didn't understand at the time was, was that, you know, we had two great partners. We had Guest Review on one hand and Foresight on the other hand. I guess what I probably didn't understand at the beginning was, was that actually how well as, as agencies they would actually work together. And it's probably that collaboration that's actually given the real power in the data and the information that we have, because, you know, they have really championed and driven that forward without me having to really get involved and drive that, you know, you, you guys have, um, have taken that forward and um, delivered that on our behalf, which is fantastic. Well, I think, you know, I've worked with a lot of marketing agencies over the years, some big, some small, and um, I genuinely mean this when I don't think I've ever worked with two agencies who are always on the end of the phone, always answer the email, probably quicker than I expected them to, and um, who genuinely want to work in true partnership. And um, a lot of that's to do with their individual company ethos, but also the individuals that they have working for them, because it certainly makes that relationship very easy 
you know, when you know that we all want the same thing and that's to deliver a great result, you know, to improve growth sales for my business, but also growth sales for their business because they are able to develop and sell us different things because we know we trust and we can work. Well, I think from a point of view, really, from the marketing department's point of view, you know, they have a, you know, an amazing understanding of it. And it's now driving things like the decisions that we make within our digital marketing strategies and digital approach, you know, having all of the information flowing into our Google Analytics allows us to be able to see, you know, the impact of individual communication channels um, you know, and where to put more money and where to spend a little bit less. I mean, I think from the hotel's point of view, it's easy that in reality, they don't really have to worry about it because everything is really happening behind the scenes. Their job really, particularly on reception, is just to make sure that they glean as much information from the guest as they possibly can. And certainly in a world where people like Booking.com and Expedia you know, are biting into our historically direct sort of sales channel, us being able to harvest that information and then talk to those guests directly, you know, is a huge source of competitive advantage for us because we're automatically better off because we don't pay the aggregator any commission. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest um, sort of revelation from post-COVID since we reopened is actually using the data from Foresight because in many of our hotels a significant percentage of the people who have stayed with us we have never seen before they are new guests to us and um, you know normally we deal with a very loyal very rich repeat base of customers and actually the way that we then onwardly treat those new guests is different to the way that we normally treat our loyal guests so we've actually gone out of our way with different campaigns to almost welcome the new guests back and encourage them into their second or third visit whereas what we'd normally have done for our loyal customers may have been something a little bit different it's more about small pieces of added value and just a little reminder that we're that we're still there so having the ability to understand you know this person who stayed here we've never seen before. It's like, okay, well, maybe we'll invest in some direct mail and some richer communication to you um, because we need to give you a little bit more of a reason to, to consider returning, you know, being different from the way that we treat, you know, our guests who probably stay with us in some cases three, four, five times a year. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, we, we go through some very complicated sort of segmentation modeling using the data through Foresight and then combining that with the trends that we see through guest review. So, you know, quite often we've got, you know, various different email formats or pieces of communication that are going out very, very personalized to lots of different groups of people. And then, um, you know, it's important to us to measure the level of engagement rates, you know, and that's measured through things like the open rates of emails. You know, and if we see that that's going down or if that's increasing, then we enhance what's going well or change what maybe isn't working. And then, you know, that can change through time of year. It can change, you know, whether it's in January or whether it's in July, it can change on what the weather's doing. You know, so we track all of those things to make sure that we optimize all of our, our marketing communications. So across all of the hotels, we've seen a, a huge increase in our direct bookings. But I think that's down to a number of different reasons. I think the segmentation and the people that we send our marketing communications to is absolutely critical. The creative execution of what you send to who is equally as important because that's got to engage the guests. But when you get them to the destination, you know, which is our website, you know, whether that be to the hotel folk where they branch out to the six hotels or whether that be to the individual um, hotel itself, they've then got to be able to transact quickly and efficiently with you because they don't want this experience to take forever. And I think if any one of those elements breaks down, 
then the marketing journey is interrupted. Um, so making sure we're sending it to the right people with the right message to a platform that they can transact, that's what increases our direct bookings. It's not really down to one of those things, it's about a combination of all three. I think largely yes. Um, you know, we, as I said, one of the big things was about integrating real-time guest feedback with real-time future guest communications. You know, and we've, we've most definitely achieved that by the partnership that we've put in place across the three stakeholders and probably four if you extend guest line into that. Um, there's a lot more that we can do and there's a lot more that we can do with the questions that we ask that will probably give us more insight to inform how we communicate with guests in the future. But the hard part is done. You know, that's really the, the, the easier part that's um, more straightforward to put into place. The best experience recently that I've had a hotel was actually in Cambodia, whereas the weirdest thing was you walked in, you got out of the taxi, you went into this hotel, they immediately took your shoes and socks off. They, they put you, they washed your feet and massaged your feet because obviously they thought you were a tired, you know, journey. And then, you know, then they gave you a really nice drink. All of the, your bag, your luggage was taken directly to the room. You know, there was no check-in procedure at all. They knew exactly who you were. So they'd really thought about and put you as the guest at the middle of it and taken away all of the horrible parts of arriving at a hotel and actually made the arrival really, really special. To almost to the point where it's like, I haven't even checked in. And it's like, yes, you have. We've just done all of that for you just by taking your name and the rest of it was, was sorted and then um, you know, I think that's the key thing that all good hotels should do is make people feel relaxed from the minute that they walk in the door and they've actually can then take a deep breath, you know, and relax. Um, you know, and I think that's what we should be about. That's what we should strive to deliver um, as the hotel folk every time.